Effective January 31st, 2022, the Federal Bureau of Prisons was placed on a national lockdown. The lockdown was initiated out of abundance of caution due to current events, which occurred at another facility. This order is to ensure the safety and security of all staff and inmates. This notice was sent out across all 120 federal prisons. Following an incident in one of the most dangerous prisons in all of America, hours before this notice was distributed, gang members would kill two inmates. Seven members of the transnational criminal gang, La Mara Salvatrucha, or MS-13, in the AA unit would attack members of the Serenos, and Mexican Mafia gangs. The incident would jump off when Juan Carlos Rivas Moreira stabbed Guillermo Riojas twice in the chest. Other MS-13 members would jump into the fray, continuing their attack. MS-13 members then chased down Andrew Pineda, a Mexican Mafia member, and repeatedly stabbed him. Riojas and Pineda would not survive. Two other members of the Serenos prison gang were also stabbed and taken to a local hospital would survive. According to the federal indictment, it alleged that gang politics were the reason behind the attack. The orders came to MS-13 members from leadership in El Salvador. The FBI noted that the three groups, MS-13, Serenos, and Mexican Mafia, all had a symbiotic relationship, often working together. This would change when the Ramfla Nacional, the name for the leadership of the group, wanted to exert more control within the U.S. prison system. They would order the hit, causing full-blown panic among federal officials. This could be the spark to start a national gang war inside the walls. The end result would be indictments against seven MS-13 members. Three of the seven were already serving life sentences, with the others having long prison terms. In a twist of fate, Riojas was on the other side of the shank several times, once at a federal penitentiary in Pennsylvania in 1996, and another at a federal penitentiary in Colorado in 2007. The Bureau of Prisons began to lift the lockdown on February 7, 2022, and had returned to normal operations by the end of the month. This prison has earned its nickname as one of the most brutal and unrelenting of any in the world. Next on Chasing Crime, we'll be looking at USP Beaumont, or Bloody Beaumont. Let's get into it. United States Penitentiary Beaumont is located within the Federal Correctional Complex Beaumont. The complex also includes medium and low security facilities, but we'll save those for another video. USP Beaumont was officially activated on April 29, 1997. It is located on 38 acres of land with a rated capacity of 957. United States penitentiaries are high security institutions with highly secured perimeters, multiple and single occupant cell housing, the highest staff to inmate ratio, and close control of inmate movement. While the nearby lower security prisons have a history of inmates walking away, there have been no recorded escapes from the penitentiary. This is likely due to the double razor wire fence that surrounds the prison. The inner compound is fully enclosed with a large concrete wall surrounding all recreation areas. If you were to make it past the wall, seven towers provide a heightened view of the perimeter with officers ready to shoot on sight. High security penitentiaries often also feature a center tower to watch over internal movement and Beaumont is no different. Housing some of the most dangerous men in the federal system are three four-story buildings. Those buildings are divided into four units, giving the prison 12 total population units. For the most unruly inmates, there is a special housing unit that includes administrative detention and disciplinary segregation. There is room for 142 men here. The penitentiary is about 20 minutes south of downtown Beaumont in Jefferson County. Beaumont is a city that was settled in 1835 along the Natchez River and now has a population of about 115,000. A significant element of the region's economy is the Port of Beaumont, one of the largest seaports by tonnage in the United States. A large oil refinery for ExxonMobil also dominates the local economy. The large correctional complex provides a significant amount of jobs for the residents. Earlier, we noted some significant murders that occurred at the prison in 2022, which occurred in a major lockdown. But the fact is, murders are commonplace at this prison. Let's take a look at a few. 
Arzell Gully and David Lee Jackson killed inmate Daryl Brown in 1999, not long after the prison opened its doors. They stabbed Brown 11 times in his cell. Gully received a life sentence, but Jackson was originally sentenced to death. Following numerous appeals, Jackson's lawyers successfully argued that his rights were violated after the federal government withheld information that Jackson had been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Jackson and Gully are now incarcerated in other federal pens for the remainder of their natural life. In 2005, Shannon Agofsky stomped to death Luther Plant in an exercise cage at the prison. Agofsky was convicted and sentenced to death. He is now on federal death row at USP Terre Haute. The prison gang, soldiers of the Aryan culture, have been responsible for at least two murders at the prison. In 2007, Mark Snarr and Edgar Garcia slipped their cuffs and stabbed two correctional officers. They grabbed the keys and went to the cell of Gabriel Roan, opened the cell door and stabbed Roan over 50 times. Snarr and Garcia are currently on death row along with Agofsky. In another incident, Ricky Fackrell and Christopher Kramer killed Leo Johns at USP Beaumont. Johns was being punished for failing to follow gang rules. At trial, they claimed they intended to assault Johns, not kill him, but they would be tried and convicted of murder. Fackrell and Kramer received the death penalty. As you can see, murders at this prison are responsible for several men on death row at the federal prison in Terre Haute. In total, there are 43 men on death row in Terre Haute. Bloody Beaumont has left its mark on federal death row cases. Since the lockdown in 2022, the violence has not stopped. On May 1st, 2022, Eric Lede was involved in a fight with another inmate. He would not survive. Lede was serving a 37-month sentence for a firearms charge. While tensions were still high at the prison from the murders in January, no lockdown was ordered as officials did not believe that the incident was gang-related. Just days before this video was released, another inmate was the victim of a serious assault. The inmate was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Following all the violence in 2022, the Union for the Officers demanded changes, including more staffing to deal with the problems. The Union president said, while no employees were reportedly injured in the most recent attack, they may not be so lucky next time. Our elected officials must take immediate action to ensure all federal prisons have the staff and resources they need to safely carry out their duties. The congressman for the district where the prison is located, Randy Weber, also weighed in on the lack of staffing and funds. He said, I reiterated my concern that chronic understaffing at our facility is a major problem that needs to be addressed by the BOP. All the staffing in the world may not solve all the violence occurring here. Before we move on to some infamous inmates at this prison, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe as we make our way to 10,000. It seems like every penitentiary houses a convicted international terrorist. Shukri Abu Bakr, the president of the Members of the Holy Land Foundation, faced charges of providing material support to Hamas, a designated foreign terrorist group. He, along with his co-defendants, were accused of funneling $12 million in aid to Palestine, despite their assertion that funds were intended for refugees and impoverished Palestinians. Abu Bakr is serving a long sentence at USP Beaumont with a scheduled release date in 2064. Another inmate at Beaumont is Willis Haynes. Haynes was convicted of murdering three women in Maryland in 1996. He is serving a life sentence. The co-defendant in the case, Dustin Higgs, was executed at USP Terre Haute in 2021. USP Beaumont is one of the most violent prisons in the country, maybe the world, with regular gang violence it seemed it's earned its moniker, Bloody Beaumont. This was another prison profile by Chasing Crime. Thanks for watching. See you next time.